Time for keys to the game. Cleveland Browns come to Cincinnati to play the Bengals at Paycor Stadium. Didn't go well up in Cleveland. The Bengals suffered their worst loss of the season by far. Lose by 19 points. Primetime, Monday night football against the Cleveland Browns. Man, the other three losses the Bengals have had this year by a combined eight points. They lost by three to Pittsburgh. They lost by three to Dallas. They lost by two to Baltimore. Could have won any and all of those football games. Never really were in the game for very long against the Cleveland Browns. Got off to a very slow start. Had a turnover on their first possession. Tenth play of the drive. T. Higgins is open in the red zone. Miles Garrett deflects the football. Deflection, interception. That was it. Bengals fell behind 11-0 at the half. 25-0 at the end of the third quarter. It's the only game this year, in my mind, that I can remember. The Bengals have been shut out for three quarters. Got to make restitution for all that. And we'll talk about keys to the game, how they're going to make restitution. First, quarterback play. Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson missed 700 days between games. I mean, he's played one football game in 700 days. He had a lot of rust and dust and, you know, not surprisingly had that rust and dust. What the Bengals have to do is make him throw the football to have to win the football game. That's the, that's the bottom line. End of sentence. In the first football game, Watson was 12 for 22, 131 yards, a little over 54% completion percentage, had an interception, had uh, no touchdown passes. Cleveland won that football game because they had three non-offensive unconventional scores. They had a pick six for 16 yards. They had a fumble recovery taken back for a touchdown, and they had a punt return by Peoples-Jones of over 70 yards. Three non-offensive touchdowns. Bengals off, uh, excuse me, the Browns offensively, they only kicked two field goals, and they had a safety. So they had a net four points. They put six on the board, and they gave two to the other team. So going to have to make Deshaun Watson throw the football to win the football game. And that means controlling Chubb. In the first game, they just they just took over in that first game at the line of scrimmage. Um, the Cleveland Browns, 44 carries of the football, 44 rushes, 172 yards. Chubb had 23 of them for 101 yards, two rushing touchdowns. They had three rushing touchdowns on the day. On the flip side of it, because the Bengals fell behind early, and then the Cleveland Browns started building that lead, Bengals only ran the ball 10 times the entire football game, 10 times for 36 yards. They threw it 35, 35 throws, 10 rushes. Cleveland, 44 rushes, 22 throws by the quarterback. So that's a two to one ratio. One throw by Amari Cooper on a gadget play, on a trick play. So obviously, (laughs) you're going to have to control the line of scrimmage, control the running game. The Bengals are going to have to get their running game going. They're going to have to control and contain the running game of the Cleveland Browns. Bottom line is, if this ends up being decided by quarterback play, we talked about the fact that Deshaun Watson has got a lot of rust and dust on him still. One thing you have to worry about Deshaun Watson, though, is that quarterback run package as part of the running game. Not only do they have Chubb and Hunt, but now Watson. They have a running back package that Deshaun Watson can execute, that they can add to that ground game. So you have to be aware of that as well. And remember, when the quarterback's running the football, it gives you an extra blocker. So it's another gap control responsibility that you don't normally have. But the Bengals have seen it. They've seen it a ton. With Jackson, with Baltimore, nobody does it better than them. So it's not like they can't, they don't have packages to take care of it defensively as well. But it'll all all be a factor in the football game. But Joe Burrow, in this stretch where the Bengals have won four in a row, they've won six out of seven, and they've won eight out of ten, Joe Burrow has played exceptional football. Three areas where the quarterback has to excel. Third down, red zone, fourth quarter. Joe Burrow has 27 touchdown passes, one interception. How about that noise? In the red zone, nine touchdown passes, no interceptions. Third down, Nine touchdown passes, no interceptions. Fourth quarter, nine touchdown passes, one interception. 
Now there's going to be an overlap there. In fact, it could be on one play. You could have, you know, a, a, a third down pass, um, you know, in, in the red zone. <laughs> That's so you double up there. So and it could be the fourth quarter, third down pass in the red zone in the fourth quarter. All three categories are included in one throw. So eliminate some of that. 27 touchdowns, one interception. Let's knock it down to about 20 because there may be some duplications in these categories. Maybe even knock it down to 18. 18 touchdowns, one interception? At the moments when the quarterback has to be at his best, when the quarterback has to win, third down, red zone, fourth quarter. Here's another interesting stat as I was preparing for the game. Joe Burrow, against non-AFC North football teams, the Bengals are 7-1. and one. Joe Burrow has 17 touchdown passes, and he's rushed for four of his five touchdowns against non-AFC teams. 21 touchdowns he's responsible for. He has no interceptions, no fumbles. 21 touchdowns that he's put on the board, either throwing or running, and he has not turned the ball over. The Bengals are 7-1. and One One and three, Joe Burrow has nine touchdown passes against division opponents. He's rushed for a touchdown. So he's got 10 touchdowns that he's accounted for. He's got eight interceptions and two lost fumbles against division opponents. 10 touchdowns, 10 turnovers. It's an even Steven deal, and they're one and three in the division. Now, granted, five of those happened in the first week, you know, when he was recovering from the appendicitis and appendectomy and all that sort of thing. So it's, you know, it's distorted a little bit, but boy, the difference between the division and the non-division games, and it also shows you, how important are turnovers? How about vitally important? So interesting stuff about Joe Burrow. And if I have to pick a quarterback, Joe Burrow, Deshaun Watson for this football game? Ha! Huh? You kidding me? I think I'm going with number nine. Another big key in this football game is going to be third down. In the first game, the Bengals were four for 10 on third down, 40% conversion rate. On the season, they're third in the National Football League and they're closer to 50% with a much bigger sample size. Got to convert better than 40% against that Cleveland Brown defense. Stay on the field uh, for longer stretches than that. You know, uh, extend drives. The Cleveland Browns, on the other hand, went 8 for 13, 61.5% conversion rate. Amari Cooper was the big reason why. Amari Cooper on the day had five catches for 131 yards and a touchdown. On third down, he had four of his five catches for 97 yards. He was a huge factor on third down. Jacoby Brissett just kept going to Amari Cooper. So the Bengals are going to have to extend drives on third down, get off the football field on third down against the Cleveland Browns. Okay, let's talk red zone, which is another huge factor in any and every football game. In the uh, first encounter, against the Cleveland Browns. The Bengals got in the red zone only one time, and they scored a touchdown. They were one for one. Got to get there more often. The fact that they executed and scored a touchdown, it's great. They only scored 13 points, so they got to get there more often. The Cleveland Browns got there five times and scored four touchdowns, 80% conversion in the red zone. Can't allow that. Can't allow the Cleveland Browns to get there five times. And if they do get there, you certainly can't allow them to convert four red zone touchdowns in five opportunities. When you get to goal to go, low red zone, first and 10 inside the 10 yard line, they were three for four, 75%. The Bengals never did get in the first and goal situation in that first football game. So let's talk about last week against the Kansas City Chiefs. What happened in the red zone there? The Bengals offensively three for seven. Now, in my mind, it's three for six because one of those red zone opportunities was after T Higgins made the catch, on third and 11, the Bengals, that, that catch took them in the red zone, but the Bengals took a knee for two snaps to kill the rest of the clock. So that's not really, in my mind, a red zone possession. The Bengals didn't even try to do anything in the red zone, but it goes against you because you were in the red zone. But they were three for six otherwise, 50%. It's not good enough. I mean, for a while there, they were number one in the National Football League offensively in red zone. They're not anymore. They're going to have to get back to a higher conversion of touchdowns and not settling for field goals in the red zone. They were two for two 
I will give them credit there. They were two for two in the low red zone inside the 10 yard line. The Bengals did convert twice. The Chiefs were three for four in the red zone, 75%. And they were two for two in the low red zone, first and goal inside the 10 yard line. Red zone is going to be big. It always is. Bengals are going to have to hold the Cleveland Browns to field goals if they do get in the red zone. And the Bengals are going to have to score touchdowns when they get in the red zone. Trade seven points for three points as much as you possibly can. That adds up quickly. Okay, let's talk another big factor, and it always is in every single football game as well, is turnovers. I mean, the Bengals get the opening drive. They, they win the coin toss, take the ball. Opening drive, 10th play of the drive. T. Higgins open, red zone. Joe Burrow throws the football. Miles Garrett tips it, interception. Bengals turn it over right away. The Bengals had two turnovers in that football game up in Cleveland, and Cleveland had two as well. It was even, even Steven. Two takeaways, two giveaways for the Cincinnati Bengals. Going to have to win the turnover battle. The Bengals done a pretty good job. They're plus two on the season. They're tied for 10th in the NFL. The Bengals only have 12 giveaways. They have not had a turnover in their last two football games against really good teams, Tennessee Titans, Kansas City Chiefs. A big reason they beat both of them in close football games is they did not give them extra possessions. They didn't do it. They didn't get any extra possessions against Tennessee. There were no turnovers in that football game by either team. But the Kansas City game, Jermaine Pratt forced a big one, ripped the ball out of Travis Kelsey's possession, gave the Bengals a short field, which they scored on. Big, big factor in a close football game. Turnovers can be difference makers. The Bengals have 12 giveaways on the season. In 12 games, they had five in the first game. So the last 11 games, the Bengals only have seven giveaways. That's pretty darn good. That's taking care of the football. That's what you have to do to win. That's why the Bengals are on a four game winning streak. They've won six out of seven and eight out of 10. They're taking care of the football. Get yourself extra possessions, take a possession or two away from the opponent. That's what it's all about particularly when you're talking about a division rival. This podcast is called In the Trenches, so let's go in the trenches. DJ Reader, Josh Tupo did not play in the first game up in Cleveland. You have both of your interior run stuffers back. That's going to be big because the Cleveland Browns ran the ball 44 times last game, controlled the line of scrimmage. Now, They're going to get one of their best offensive linemen back, a pro bowler, Wyatt Teller. Wyatt Teller did not play in that first game up in Cleveland as well. So that matchup between Wyatt Teller and DJ Reader is going to be worth the price of admission if you're a fan of interior line play, which I am. That's going to be a stirring battle. There is no question about it. But in my mind, who's going to be the better duo, Chubb and Hunt or Mixon and Pirine? Hopefully Joe Mixon's back. I think he will be. He just did not quite pass concussion protocol, but I think that it'll happen uh, for him to be able to play in the game against the Cleveland Browns. The Bengals have to be the most physical team. They have to be the one that straps on those big boy pads and doubles that chin strap up and gets after it. That's what they did in Tennessee against a very physical football team. That's what they did with Kansas City. The Bengals were the more physical football team. They weren't up in Cleveland. I mean, it just, it, that's just the nature of the, of the outcome. 44 carries for 172 yards on the ground. Bengals had 10 for 36. What the Cleveland Browns also did, and what they will do in this football game, is the big formation. They're going to use two and three tight ends. Well, at least one, maybe two of those tight ends at times are going to be extra offensive linemen. They're going to go with the big formation. The Bengals do the same thing with Adenogy. The Cleveland Browns did it on quite a few snaps up there on the Monday night game against the Bengals in Cleveland. They went big, and they tried to be very physical. The Bengals are going to have to match that. And the Bengals and Adenogy be physical. Go with the extra When you go extra tight ends, particularly uh, with the injury that the, that the Bengals have with Hayden Hurst, Use that extra offensive lineman. Let let, uh, let let them see what they can do coming off the football at the line of scrimmage big time. Control the trenches. Just look at the line of scrimmage. 
Whoever's winning the line of scrimmage is going to get an upper hand in the outcome of the football game. That's just football 101. Peewee football all the way up to the National Football League. Another big key in this game, who tackles? We're talking fundamentals. We're talking blocking. We're talking tackling. That's what it's going to boil down to in the Battle of Ohio in an intense rivalry. Against Tennessee Titans, the Bengals' defense collectively missed one tackle. Against Kansas City, they missed six, which is still a workable number. That's not a whole lot of missed tackles. They are a very sure tackling team. Their fundamentals are there. Their willingness is there. They're getting their head across the bow, and they're wrapping people up, and they're taking them to the ground. You have to kill the engine, particularly with a guy like Chubb. His engine runs at a high level of RPMs. They killed the engine of Derrick Henry. They made him stop his feet, killed the engine, took him to the ground. Mike Hilton slicing in there, making tackles, taking his feet and legs right out from under him. I think Chubb is even going to be more difficult. Chubb is a little bit more smooth, a little bit more fluid. He's going to be a little bit more, more difficult to shut his engine down. But that's what they have to do. He runs through a lot of tackles. He's got a low center of gravity, very powerful, very, very strong in the legs. I've seen videotape of him squatting the world, literally. The whole bar is bending. The weights are hitting the floor. This guy, this guy is a freak of nature. You have to gang tackle a guy like this. You have to get a lot of players run to the football. A lot of players have to get there, and everybody contribute to the cause. Limit it. Limit. Minimize yards after contact. It's going to be a big factor in this football game. Once again, with Deshaun Watson, what you have to do is take away his early options. Don't give him any easy reads. Lou Anarumo has been masterful at disguising coverages and disguising, disguising blitz and pressure packages. Masterful. Deshaun Watson's been away from the game for a couple of years. It's going to be tough for him to recognize and make quick reads. I mean, show him something pre-snap and something totally different post-snap. I mean, that, that's going to that's gonna get him out of sync and off balance and uncomfortable. Hesitation is just as a bad a situation as being wrong. If you are not sure, you're hesitant, that's not a good situation. And that's what Lou Rumo can do with a guy like Deshaun Watson. Take away those early options and make him have to throw to win the football game. One thing the Cleveland Browns do a very good job of, though, and they'll probably do quite a bit of this with Deshaun Watson, they have an excellent screen game. And that's a very, very easy confidence builder for quarterbacks. Throw the screens. The quarterback sees a completion. It builds his confidence. He sees the guy actually catching a pass. They use running backs. They use tight ends. They use wide receivers. They screen you to death. Every screen known to man, the Cleveland Browns have in their playbook. Defensively, you have to play with proper leverage. You have to be able to read it properly, leverage the ball properly, and get a lot of bodies once again to the football. Run to the ball, gang tackle, that'll take care of the screen pass as well. The Bengals need to get their running game going. That offensive line is really starting to take control of the line of scrimmage. They're taking pride in coming off the football and moving people against their will and, and getting some knockback blocks. That's going to be big in this football game. The Cleveland Browns defensively are undersized a little bit. They're very fast and they're very athletic. Use it against them. Run right at them. Anchor them. Then use some misdirection. to Use that speed and athleticism against them. But first thing you want to do is run right at them. And what that will do is it'll anchor Miles Garrett. Run the ball down his throat. Run it right at him. That will help you pass protect Miles Garrett. This guy is a game wrecker as a pass rusher. He's got 10 sacks on the season. He's tied for fifth in the National Football League. He had the big deflection for an interception. He had sacks in the last game. I think he's got nine career sacks against the Cincinnati Bengals. I mean, Miles My Garrett is, is one of those. It's almost like he's the Baker Mayfield of the, of the defensive football team of the Cleveland Browns. When Baker Mayfield was in Cleveland, he had a winning record against the Bengals, a losing record overall against every other team in total in the National Football League. Miles Garrett runs up his numbers statistically against the Cincinnati Bengals as well in terms of a pass rusher. 
run the football right at him, then run misdirection, and uh, and see how all that works out. Another key is getting off to that fast start. They almost got it done up there in Cleveland. Like we said in that first drive, they were moving the ball. They were establishing a nice rhythm and timing, and they have the turnover on the deflected pass. Score first. Get off to a fast start. One thing you don't want to do against the Cleveland Browns is fall behind by more than one score. If you fall behind by more than one score, they are going to put you in the meat grinder. They are going to hand the ball to Chubb, and they are going to play keep away, and that clock is going to tick, tick, tick away. So get off to a fast start. You build a two-score lead and make the Cleveland Browns have to throw the football. Make them one-dimensional. A two-score lead or more, keep pouring it on. If they're less than two scores, the Cleveland Browns are going to run the football. If the Cleveland Browns are in a tie football game or have a one-score lead, they're going to pound the football. It's imperative you get off to a fast start and get an early lead in this football game and be the most physical football team. At First Star Logistics, we're a very strict company that really puts the pressure on our employees. Brakes? What are those? That's what I'm talking about, Icky. Get the body right, then the mind's right. You yeah. know, you know, you gotta get that body right. That's right. right. Yes, sir. <laughs> Become a star with a chance to earn the highest commission percentages in the industry as a freight broker agent. Check out FirstStarLogistics.com.